Okay, thanks, Admiral. Um, sorry to press you on this issue of, um, of Rafa, but I mean, and you say there's, you know, we're not going to talk about um, possible halting military aid, you're not going to talk about consequences. What leverage does the White House actually have uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that Israel does not launch uh, a military offensive in, uh, in Rafa, uh, you know, without taking the necessary steps? Well, I don't think you're all that sorry about pressing me on this, but I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and... <laughs> it's okay, it's all right. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, look, it's not about leverage. Uh, it, it's about being consistent. And, and I've said it before just in the last few minutes. It's about being consistent about our desire to make sure Israel can defend itself so that October 7th can't happen again, which Hamas obviously wants to do. And it's being consistent about the, need, the, the how they conduct those operations matter. And we have been consistent since the very beginning in talking to the Israelis about about the how, uh, about operations and how they're conducted. And I would tell you um, that throughout this conflict, there have been moments, and there continue to be moments, where we have the opportunity and have taken the opportunity to shape their thinking and to help influence the way they have conducted some of these operations. And that remains today. Thank you. Hi, John. Um, you referenced the release of two hostages, but also there is reports that in the process of this special operation, three hostages were killed, along with 100 Palestinians, including women and children. Also, Egypt threatened to withdraw from the Camp David Agreement if Israel invaded Rafah. So how does the White House navigate this rather complex uh, picture? Yeah, I, I tried to address that in my opening statement, Nadia. Uh, we don't want to see any civilians killed one at any time, Israel, Israeli or, or Palestinian, in the conduct of operations. Um, the, the right number is, is zero. And so while we're very glad that two hostages are now back with their families where they belong, we certainly mourn any loss of innocent life uh, as a result of those operations. And it just, it just underscores, I think, a couple of things. One, and again, we're not, I can't validate the numbers. I, I've seen the reports, but I can't confirm them. But it does underscore two things. One, the difficulty of conducting military operations in such a closed-in urban environment where there are so many people, and as we talked about earlier, even more people now in the South and Rafa than there were before. So that, that's an added difficulty for the IDF. And number two, it underscores the obligation that they have and that they know they have. Uh, to be careful and discriminate and, uh, and very deliberate in how, they, in how they go after targets. Last thing on this, though, and I think it's an important point, and you didn't ask this, but it's an, uh, we, we do know that Hamas uh, leadership and, uh, and fighters migrated south. They got pressured in the north, so they went down to Khan Yunus. Of course, they were already in Khan Yunus, but they kind of congregated there. Um, and then as the Israelis put pressure on them in Khan Yunus, they gravitated further south now towards Rafa. They, by their very presence and their operations down there, they are further endangering uh, the people uh, of, uh, of Gaza that are now settled or trying to f find um, uh, refuge down there uh, in, in Rafa. So there, is, there, is, um, there are legitimate military targets that the Israelis uh, are going to want to go after in Rafa. Again, we just urge them, as we have, to be careful. I also want to ask you that President comments, he referenced over the top and he also said that Israel indiscriminately killing people in Gaza. Yet he's willing to sign off on almost $14 billion in military aid. So how can you reconcile the fact that he's worried about civilian casualties without any serious review about how U.S. weapons are used in a civilian area? Well, I think you know, we uh, uh, just last week, um, late in the week, uh, we issued a national security memorandum that, um, that codifies existing policies and adds reporting requirements onto those existing policies about our expectations for how military assistance is going to be provided to any foreign actor, and of course that includes Israel.